Hallelujah and God bless you today. How are you today? Wow, let me get comfortable here. <laughs> We're going to have a discussion today. First off, you know what? Let's pray. Dear Father God, please allow everything that it is that you need said, that you want said, that you desire out of me today, and that you desire whoever's looking at this to get today. Father God, let that happen. Let it happen, Father God. We ask that your will be done in me and in whoever's watching this. Father God, I love you. I pray to you. I praise you. I worship you. I thank you for allowing me to speak to you. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' holy name. So, um, today, let me see if I get my Bible together here. Um, let, let's see. What are we going to talk about today? Today, um, I went on my walk today. Um, you've, I've been taking you guys on my walks, and you've seen what my walks are like. Um, my walks are hour up, hour back. I encounter different people. I see different things every day um, just by the things that are in front of me that I place in front of my my sight God um, inspires me to get a lesson from it like um, I was talking about sowing seeds and um, also I've been talking about um, things manifesting out of me and out of you and where this manifest manifestation come from I've been talking about Fruits of the Spirit, um, faith without works is dead. Fruit, excuse me, I'm actually drinking a lot of fluids. Fruits of um, um, fruits of the flesh, um, or works of the flesh. There are no fruits of the flesh. Well, there's gonna be rotten fruit, but um, <laughs> uh, but but works of the flesh and these types of things. Um, We've been going into depth in this series that um, if you've been following along in this documentary that I realized that I'm doing and documenting, this is a true reality series I'm doing for 40 days, um, maybe 41, you know, and um, after that, maybe even more. Um, I don't know if I'll do it on a daily basis. It depends. If, if, <laughs> give me some comments. Let me know. Uh, because it seems to be... It, well, I, I know, in fact, it's hard for people to keep up. Because um, I put them out every day. Every day. Because um, I do it for God. I do it for Jesus Christ. I do it like this is my job. I do it with responsibility. I do it with integrity. I do it to the best of my ability. So guess what? I do it. And I let nothing get in front of it. It's how serious I take it. I mean, most a lot of people take their job more serious than they do God. That's the truth. More, more people will bow down, shut their mouth, and go along with the program at their job. Whereas in the kingdom, with God's kingdom and God's um, Bible, he says things should be a certain way. And people do not adhere to it. So, um, today, I, um, yeah, you know what, actually, there's an interesting topic right there, that, um, a lot of people will, they don't take things seriously in the kingdom of God, and what they do, they take, they take life here on earth more serious than life in heaven. They see this as it, and the Bible says that a man who only can see this as, um, and this is it for them, is the most miserable man. I don't know exactly where it's at, but it's in there. Um, let me have a sip of coffee. Hallelujah. Um, not allow me to have outside distractions either. Um, and which is something that I was, um, it was interesting today on my walk because um, God is giving me understanding of the things that are around me, of the things on the outside, and how his word applies to that. Um, because I believe it's important that what is on the outside, you know, that you can control what's, what's in your view, what, what, things that you allow in, is in your control at times. I mean, because economics will depend on where somebody lives sometimes, or, um, 
your situation be where you where um like children have to live with their parents you know that type of thing or you know it's just all kinds of things that could happen but what you literally put in front of you is up to you because you can always close your eyes to it um I am um looking more at um works of the flesh and the things of the flesh and things on the outside how they affect me um for a long time I was I allowed a lot of things that were on the outside to affect how I felt on the inside during this I'm learning that that's lopsided that's wrong and um that is the devil's specialty because what he does is he feeds you he feeds you from the outside constantly and he feeds you even without your consent and sometimes without your knowledge you go into Walmart today go to 7-Eleven and what do you hear? you hear music music ministers to you no matter what it is coming out of it it's ministered to you the devil hides underneath the lyrics he'll put nice frosty little music tones but underneath the lyrics you got nasty Minaj you got um, little Lil Wayne or whatever his name is um, you got these filthy filthy degenerate people singing to you ministering to you and you walk into it and you sit there you go to these places long enough before you know it you will learn these songs how do you learn them because they got in they got in and they take up residency there they they <laughs> they rent space in your head and where do they get the funds to rent the space from you because <laughs> you keep going there and um you keep participating in it how do, what do you do how do you get out of it well there's ways there's a way around everything I a lot of times when I walk out of this house I have my headphones on and I cover my ears I'm listening to something that I want to hear and um, I block out the world the world is so filthy today I mean you got I mean literally you go to Walmart you listen to that music they're playing and it is filthy and when you, you I was sitting here in my room right here with this window was open there's um, some beautiful a beautiful young girl lives next door she's only about 14 years old and she had a friend over I could tell it was a friend they were outside and I could hear them singing and they're singing they're, they're saying MF this and MF that MFB that MF the B word MFB F this F that I I look right at them and they're like and they go in the house room <laughs> proudly singing it and then all they did was because they figured I could hear them right here they're in front of my window all they did was go in the house close the door and I could still hear them through the wall and F this and, and do this to me and screw me this way and And guess what? It manifests itself. When somebody so when somebody comes and talks to that person like that, it's not a shock to them. They're not like, why are you talking to me like that? Why, why not? You sing it all day long. Why don't we do it? And they do. That's how the devil gets his inroad them. And a lot of people don't understand that. It is, Jesus said, it's not what's on the outside that defiles you, it's what's on the inside. That defiles you but the thing is when you understand the concept is what are you allowing inside what is getting into your holy of holies what's getting inside your inner court what lives there I was walking today and um, I I was um, listening listen to um, Ministry, Omega Ministries. I was listening to Pastor Pastor Price, and he was ministering, or he was he was talking, and um, things started coming up in me. Not because of his ministering. I mean, that was just that <laughs> no. This is in me inside. 
um, because I see people and things and it will spark something in, in that's already in me and I started thinking about a person who I was with who I used to get loaded with and I had images of this person and then I had images of things we did and it stimulated, it was stimulating me and the Lord was exposing what was in me I haven't thought about I have not thought about that. I don't think about these things on a regular basis because I, I can use something on the outside like earphones, music, and worship and things and I'm letting that inside to minister to me. But the things that are in there are still there. They need to come up and they need to be cast out. How do you do that? Literally, when you have something inside you that you have, an experience that you had, um, that you really enjoyed at the time may have been no good for you but you still enjoyed it regardless if you, t if you make a neutral and you say do you enjoy and not enjoy you enjoy it that's taking off the um, consequences of those things and that's what the, that's the devil's specialty is pleasure all the, the entire devil the demonic world is pleasure to the human and then when you find out the wages of your sin is death and you die and you land in hell he flips the script on you all that pleasure is now leaving you now you must reap what you sowed you sowed nasty now you're about to get nasty over here torture and so um I'm I, I'm, I'm walking and I, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord like, Lord where's this coming from where is this coming from and it's like it's it's in there, and I can't. I'm I'm I'm, I'm like I get this out of me. I want this out. I want, because it was it was exposed. It was there, and um, it happened to me before before when I wasn't fasting. And what I did was I ignored it and pretended I'm like oh no I, that didn't affect me. That's a did you liar? <laughs> it's like um a person who um walking on the freeway says I don't believe in cars just because you don't believe in cars doesn't that mean you're not going to get run over on that freeway don't be stupid so um, I ignore I, I was ignoring these things these signs because I was just pushing them away and and that aspect I was saying to myself oh yeah I, that's deliverance that's not deliverance that's just you suppressing it you're not casting it out you're pushing it down and when you push it down you, it's still inside. You need to get this up and out. To get it out, you you must manifest it. You get, it has to be exposed. It has to come into the light. You know, if it's not in the light, how can you clean? How can you clean the dirt unless you have uh, light on it? You don't. You won't know where the dirt is at. So how are you going to clean it? But when when you're fasting, God will manifest this stuff up in you, and you'll see things that you thought, oh man, I ain't thought about that in a long time. And it'll come up. And guess what? It came up. And I was walking out saying, get this out of me. Get this off me. I don't want this. I was, I bind this. I cast it out. That in Jesus' holy name, get rid of this. Lord Jesus, cast this off me. Cast it out of me. I see it. What? It's exposed. Let's go after it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Don't leave it. Get it get it in a threefold cord the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit wrap it up in a threefold cord and yank it out in Jesus holy name bind it and cast it out how do you get rid of it? where did it come from in the first place? how does, well, how does this stuff happen? you, you know what? How, how, how do people end up in hell? for one thing they end up in hell just because they're not good people no you end up in hell because you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and so what does that do when you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Um, is that you just saying, well, I believe. Is that what the Bible said? No. I'm going to go here real quick. I got it, I got it all set up right here. I, I wasn't expecting to go here. I'm going to um, good old famous John 3.16. Go there and read it. But not in the popular fashion. Just really read it. John 3 now go to 
16. I'm reading the New Living Translation. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. They skip that, don't they? There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. He says those believe in him. Um, Where's that at in the Bible? Somebody tell me, you Bibleologists. That's where Jesus said, those that believe in me, follow my commands. So, what he said is an action. It's an action that you do when you believe in something. I believe I have a million dollars, so I start spending it. It's an action. I believe that I am an African American man, so I walk in it and I present myself as that. I believe something, so I act on it because of that belief. I believe if I stand at that corner where that bus stop is at, the bus will come, and I will. And when it comes, I will. I'll, the action I'll take is I'll get on it and ride it because I believe that is a public bus. It's an action, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fear their sins will be exposed. Those people who you see who are, don't even go to church people. Because church, some church people may be the filthiest of them all. And they refuse to come into the light. They will dodge truth left and right like, like, like bullets. Like Wonder Woman with bullets. <laughs> they dodge the truth because they don't want to be exposed in the light. You come up with, you go into First Timothy and you show a woman a pastor where it says you can't be a pastor. She will dodge that. She'll dodge that bullet. Because she will not stand in light and will not preach on that. Because you can't come into the light. You must stand in the dark. Have you ever been to a bar? When's the last time you seen a bar that was lit up? When's the last time people had a party? I mean, I'm talking about a, a sinner's gathering. Not, not, not a holy party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a party and people are dancing and drinking liquor and smoking the dope and doing this stuff full of lights. You, you don't get that, huh? People like doing this stuff in the dark. Just walk, if you're some bar that you, even at a hotel, they dim the lights in the bar. Everywhere in the hotel be lit up, but that bar is dim. And judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but the people love darkness more than they love the light. They love to sit in error. They will not come out of error. They will not come into the light. They love to play with the truth in the church. But the people of the world, they just they flat out sit in the dark. And who do... Who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for the fear that sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see they can see that they would can see that they are doing what God wants. You ever notice somebody who is um, doing God's work does it publicly? The things they say is public for all to hear. The things they do is public for all to hear.
They don't hide nothing. Transparent. But people who do evil, they pretend to be transparent, transparent, but in the background, they whisper. The Bible talks about a wink and eye. They do that in secret. They go behind doors and they chit chat about other people in quiet. Of the devils. According to the Bible right here, this is their devil. And so, they said, oh, well, let's go here too. Let's check this out. I, I want to read this for you. Go to um, Matthew 7.21. Matthew 7. 21. Okay, here. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will, who actually do. Not who talk, but those that do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. So if you, you sit around talking about I love Jesus, and you sit around... Um, running your mouth but your actions show something different you're manifesting something different you're not doing the will of God you're doing your will do what thou wilt be, be the rule of the, um, the land but that's, that's Satanism I did it my way that's Satanism um, when you do the will of God then you get to get in. Those, if you're not doing the will of God, you're not getting in. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. That's verse 22. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, with big L's. So who are these people who would call Jesus Christ Lord? Those that believe... Because Jesus once said, he said, why do, you call, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? I'm not your Lord. The devil's your Lord. So if they're calling him Lord, Lord, these people believe that they're Christians. We prophesied in your name. Oh, they got a word from the Lord for you. And cast out demons in your name. They have a deliverance ministry. And perform many miracles in your name. God used the donkey, the jackass, to perform miracles. <laughs> he will use whatever vessel he wants. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break my father's laws. So if you got to, I'm just going to go here. If you are a female church pastor... And against the word of God says, nope, you're not. And you say, yes, I am. You break God's law. You, you break God's ways. There's not one female pastor in this Bible. Not one. Deborah, she was a judge. She was not a pastor. And there was even a, um, let me go to this real quick. For all you people who don't like to listen. <laughs> I could, you, you know what, that's the best thing to do when you want to show somebody something, instead of just talking about it, show them through the Bible. Let me see. Okay, I don't want to go here. How can I get back to my index? Okay, it won't work for me. There we go. What a bookmark. I love this little thing. I was reading, I, I, I got it to, I need to, I'm going to finish the uh, book of Judges tonight. Here it is. Uh, go to the book of Judges. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Book of Judges, verse, um, chapter 4, verse 9. Book of Judges, chapter 4, verse 9. Okay, let's see. I'll read. Okay, here we go. Let me start off here. 
and I will call out. This is let me let me set this up. Barack, uh, or it was a it was a a man who had come to Deborah because he wanted a word from God about um, they were going into battle, and so um, Barack told Barack was his name like a llama. Barack <laughs> Barack told her I will go. Because she was saying, go and God's going to give you the victory. She, if you go back up to um, four, or, or you can go actually back up, read the whole thing. But anyway, I'm just setting it up. She was, um, he, he was going into battle. He wanted the word from God about the battle. And so she gave him the word. And she said, God is giving you the victory. And he said, we'll, uh, we'll go, but you must come along. We want you to come and lead us. And this is what she said. Barack told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Caesarea will be at the hand of a woman. So Deborah went with Barack to Kadesh. Because he was a wimp, and he put a woman over him. She said it with her own mouth. That because you put me and I'm a woman over you. You will have no honor. There's no honor in it. She said it with her own mouth in scripture. It is written. There's no honor having a woman over you. You may even get the victory. But you will get none of the rewards and receive nothing from it. Because... It's a shame for man to place a woman over him. It's, it's written. It's written. It's written. Let me see. What was this again? This is Book of Judges chapter. Read the whole chapter four, and you re, you need to read all about her that these women love to preach about, or who love who say they follow. They follow her because that's the only one they got. And according to her, from her own mouth. It's a shame. Go to verse 9 again. Very well, she replied. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Caesarea will be at the hand of a woman. Now, come on now. This is so obvious. But um, I'm trying to find my glasses. I dropped them on the floor. <laughs> but for... Um, those men who want to sit underneath that and refuse to come up from underneath it. The word of God says that you have no honor. There's no honor in you. None. None. And God sees no honor in you. Um, if you go to the book of 1 Timothy, he talks about, let me see, let's go there real quick. 1 Timothy, if I, I hope I can find it quickly. Because, um... I, let's see, I don't want to, 1st Timothy, let me go, 1st Timothy, here we go, let me start off at 1, oops, what's the 6, uh, well actually, I'll just tell you what it says, just read the book of 1st Timothy tonight, because I don't have it marked, I don't think I have it marked, actually, let me see if I have it bookmarked, um, Oh, here, this is First Timothy 1. What is this? Uh, I think it starts... Oh. Um, no. It's, this is, um... Uh, first Timothy 1 is about, um... Well, first... It's a good it's a good one for you to know off the top of your mind, off the top of your head. It'd be first Timothy chapter one, verse nine. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their fathers and mothers or commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral. That would be homosexuals who and who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that can contradicts 
the wholesome teaching. And when you keep going into the, the rest of this um, book, it talks about women being in their place. And it, it, it disqualifies female pastors. So according to that, hmm, you're an error. But this is not what this was about today. I don't even know how I got on that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, this is about stuff was coming up in me. And um, when I was walking, I was like, get this stuff off me, Lord. Help me. Um, yeah, I, I know what I was going to. Let me just, I'm gonna drink coffee. What I was going with that was that um, it's not that. How, how do I? I want. I want. I want. I want to get this right. It. 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 it um, was inside of you. If it's in there, then um, is that still your nature? This isn't me talking. Asking myself. It's because with what's in your nature will you will manifest what you are. What you are is what you what you manifest. That's why you must be born again so that you will become a child of God. And if you are a child of God, you will manifest the things of God will come out of you. So um, what if like me, I'm manifesting the things of God, but I still got some of that old remnant in there? Is that a demon sitting in there, God? Is that that the, is that the programming that is still on me that needs to be reprogrammed, God? What is it? Whatever it is, I want it out. It's exposed. I see it. I feel it. I know what's there. It can't no. That's 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 the stupidest thing somebody can do. Is to go and ask somebody if they think that something is in you. You know something's in you. You ain't stupid. I have people ask me, do you, how, how do I know if I have the Holy Spirit? Well, if you have to ask me, you probably don't have it. Hi. <laughs> That's like if my mother came and um, was visiting. How, how do you, how, when I go outside and say, is my mother in the house? No, you can go over and see her. She's right there. So if you have the Holy Spirit inside of this house, you should be able to feel him right there convicting you of, things and if he's not convicted if you if you can sin and get away with it you don't have the Holy Spirit if you can sit there and smoke cigarettes and feel nothing about it you don't have the Holy Spirit if you can fornicate and or be a homosexual and feel nothing about it and even feel justified through it you don't have the Holy Spirit what you are is a deceived person and you have demons that that are deceiving you if you're an effeminate man um, do you have the Holy Spirit um, yeah, that's a good question then though too. When a feminine man can you house a feminine can a feminine man house the Holy Spirit? Is that possible? Because that person is the feminine first John uh not first John, um that's um first Corinthians six, nine and ten. I always go there. You should everybody who watched my video should know about first John I'm not first John, uh, should know about first Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, in the King James Version, it says the effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of God. When he said the effeminate, he was not talking about a woman, an effeminate man. So if that person is effeminate, that means he's housing devils. And if he's housing devils, can he be housing the Holy Spirit at the same time? I do believe that... Um, I know, well, I actually know this is fact. I had a dream about it before. I did. A person can be saved or um, be in the process, you know, be saved. We're just talking about the process. Be saved. You're the saved, but you ain't saved. You're the in or you're out. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. You don't be a little bit pregnant or a little bit saved. You either are or you're not. And if you are saved, um, the Holy Spirit can be inside there taking back the land so if he's taking back read your bible and read how when um, they go into a place when Moses went into places you go into places and you scout it out and then you take it over so if the Holy Spirit comes in comes in builds up a stronghold 
and then start moving out the enemy. So can a um, Christian have demons? Yes. Yeah. A Christian can have demons. It has to be. Because if think but this is the way I think. I think logically because God is logical. I think practically because God is practical. I I believe I try I try my best to to think the in a godly manner of the character of God because I read his Bible and I know how God is. And if something's out of character and that's not a that's not of God. Because it's out of character, like female pastorship. It's out of character for God. He didn't put one woman, even Deborah knew that it was a shame for a woman to be over a man. She said, you, there was no honor in it. None. None. And so, um, and you men who have women over you, there's no honor in you. None. And so, um, you, you have no honor for the victory. Because... He can use you like that jackass. Um, and, <laughs> and then when you go to hell, I don't know. That's God's judgment, huh? Um, so, um, but can he use you? Nope. I mean, that, what are you going to use you for? Anyway, um, is it, was it usurped, usurped by women or something like that? I forgot the exact term. I have to study that one. Um, anyway, where I was going with this is just that um, what is housing? It was housing you. It's like um, like if a person buys a house. Let's say that I came to Jesus and I I'm saved. I'm so so stone cold. Um, believing and I'm walking in it on the first day I say yes Lord I surrender all and um just because I said that is the demons gonna say oh well he Victor he said he surrenders all and I see he's, he's, he's reading his Bible and he's acting all holy now come on guys this this pack up our stuff we gotta go forget it we gotta get out of here think practically don't be Stupid. If you bought a house, beautiful house, and it had termites in it, just because you bought that house, did the termites get up and go? No. You got to call in an exterminator and get those jokers out of there. You see what I'm saying? The termites will be exposed through an inspection. How? What is the inspection? The inspection is that you look and see what's manifesting. If some things are still manifesting, that means you still got termites. I still got termites and they must go what do you so what do I do I fast and I pray I ask God to expose them and then I throw myself up on the altar and I say God okay Jesus I will do everything I can do on my hand here's my here's my two fish and my five loaves of bread that's all I got Lord and I'm bringing everything I got to you will you bless it and multiply it and he is faithful and he blesses and he multiplies it and he will deliver you. So, but you gotta expose something first. You sitting around pretending. You sitting around all soft voiced and feminine and acting like a little sissy. And um, you over there pretending like you're a man because you got a girlfriend or something like that. Come on now. I had a girlfriend. I was. A, I had so much sugar in my tank. <laughs> I couldn't even drive. My sugar in the tank. Um, that's before I even knew. You know, so um, don't use that as a litmus test just because they got a wife or a girlfriend and some kids that they're not a sissy. No, that that's not the litmus test. What are they manifesting? What's coming out their mouth? How is their eyebrows did up? Are they um, all dainty and soft and um, do they have all the creams and? Can't go nowhere if number two here is out of place. And oh no, I definitely can't step outside unless I'm fresh dressed and paint my nails with the clear, the clear, the clear, the clear paint on the nails. And that's a homosexual. 
That's, that's fruity pie. Mm hmm. That's peppermint patty. Is your daddy. <laughs> Man. Coffee break. Um, anyway, you could have demons in you still. But if you're a Christian, you're in the process of working and out and casting out and taking over the land by the things that you put in front of you, by the things that you do on the outside, that you allow inside to take over the land and push out the devil. If you're a Christian and you love listening to that music, it's because you've got an appetite for it because what's inside of you is how the devil that likes that music. If you are a masturbator, you have a devil in there that likes the masturbation. If you're a pornography look at her, you got a demon in there that likes looking at that pornography. If you're engaged in any sin on a regular basis, you have something in there that likes that. And if you continue to practice it, you will, you're, you, you, that's evidence that you're not saved. Go to First John three seven. First John three seven. Oh, twelve. First John three seven. And what it says is that First John three seven. Start there. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Eight. When, but when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. It says when they keep on. They didn't say when they sin. That's not what it said. Because everybody will fall into some type of sin every once in a while. When they keep on sinning. They say you came into the kingdom of God and you were a prostitute. You, you still going to church 10 years later and you're still a prostitute. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. They say that they don't sin. No, I didn't say that, you people who want to jump on folks who say that they are saints and not sinners. A sinner keeps sinning. He practices sin. Those who have been born again into God's family do not make a practice of sin. Do you make a practice of smoking cigarettes? That's a practice. You do it every day. You may even get down to one or two a day. You may drink, drink, drink alcohol. You may have a um, three, four a day, just enough to get a buzz. Whew. Those who have been born in God's family is nine. Do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. That means His Holy Spirit is housed in you. So they can't. It says they can't. They can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. Why can't you do that? Well, what, what, Billy Bob? Why can't you do that? Because I don't know how, Miss Teacher. Nobody ever taught me that. Oh, so you don't have the knowledge of that. You don't have. You don't know anything about that. That's why you can't do it. Yes, that's why I can't do it. Oh, so if you are housing the Holy Spirit, you don't have sin in you. So that's why you can't do it. Yeah, I don't have any sin. I ran out. I kicked it all out. The Holy Spirit pushed it all out. I don't have any more. All my sin is gone. Hmm. You understand that? Peggy Sue? Um, what, 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 why can't you do that? I don't have any more left. Oh. Why can't you sin? Because I have no sin in me. Well, um, you can go over there and, um, Borrow some of his. 
<laughs> so what I'm saying is that you can have something housed in you and when you're fasting it will bring it up something I haven't even thought about or even thinking about I'm, I'm, I'm having these visualization almost fantasy like things in my head that is stimulating me and I'm saying what in the world where is this coming from get this out I don't want this no more I'm sick of it I'm sick of it I can't take it no more please Lord take it out here's my my five loaves of bread and my two fish take it off me whatever your sin may be take it off me is what you do I tell you this is my real experience that happened to me today I'm like, take it off me, take it off me, take it off me. And so I'm walking back. And um, I'm, it's dark. And I'm, like, when I'm, when I'm walking, I showed you those people's houses. I, one person had their house, all the curtains pulled open and pulled back. It was just totally exposed and open. I'm just like, all looking in their business and stuff. And I fell. <laughs> I, I even uh, let me show you. See, look at the pants. I ripped my pants. Let me see if I can get this in the shop. I even ripped my pants right here. See that? Anyway, I even ripped my pants. I'm sitting there. I wasn't even peeking through the one. It was wide open. I was just. What you doing? What are you putting before your face? What are you hoping to see over there? What if somebody came out naked? What are you going to do? Oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil putting that in front of my eyes. No, it ain't. That was you. You shouldn't have been looking in the first place. So, bam, I went down. I went down like a stack of pancakes. <laughs> Loaded up with maple syrup. Bam. And I hit, oh, it hit hard, too. It got a big sore there. Like, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy God, how, how, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. You know, when you fall and you five years old, even when you're 20 years old, it's like no big deal. You fall when you're 42 years old, you like, bam. You, you, <laughs> it's like, ow. That's been a long time since I felt like that. But the Lord was letting me know, you can fall at any time. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your eye on what's in front of you and stop being distracted by what's over there. By those shiny lights, everything that glitters is not gold. Stop buying into whatever is over there. You, that's none of your business over there. That movie is none of your business. That song is none of your business. That's not my business. Unless it's on the road in front of me, blocking my way. Freemasonry. On the road, blocking the way. The Antichrist blocking the way. You know, those things, pay attention to those things because they're blocking your way. They're blocking you. But that over there, that new movie that just came out, or that Jay-Z CD that just came out, that's that shiny house over there that will make you fall and stumble. You see what happened? And this really happened to me. I showed you what happened to me, and God ministered to me through it. And when I came home, I was just so full of, God, get this off, man. I want this on me. Where's this coming from? Why are these feelings coming back? And my stomach literally, I had to come home quickly, too. My stomach was gurgling. It was gurgling on the inside. Gurg I haven't eaten in uh, 25 days. Why is my stomach gurgling like that? I ain't been drinking that much stuff. I mean, it was gurgling. I was like, oh, I had to go in the bathroom. And I was had a bowel movement. And turn this stuff was coming out. And it was like, ooh. What is that coming coming out? From deep down in my bowels, the stuff was coming out of me. Coming out. What was that that was coming out? I tell you, when I first came into the kingdom, I was uh, having bowel moves like that. Was, and I wasn't even fasting. It was rushing out and it was blood coming out with it. What was coming out then? Why is it happening again now? What's coming out? And you know what? 
Cause you can easily, I can easily say, well, hey, now I can fall back cause I, I still got it in me. I don't know, hey, nobody said you got it. It could have just came out in the toilet, whatever was in there. But now, what are you going to do? Stay on the road. Don't be distracted by the bright lights. Don't be distracted by somebody leaving their stuff wide open for you to be peeping at. You, just because it's there don't mean you need to go peeping at it. Just because Saul is in the cave with you, David, don't mean you get to kill him. You know, whatever the instance may be, stay on that road and keep your eye on the road and what's in front of you so that God can guide you. If you're looking all over here, you, you're walking down the street like this. You're walking like this. Yeah, use me, God. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I, I, I'm with you, God. Come on now. Come on. It's one thing to be observant of your surroundings, which everybody should be, and God teaches you that. But it's also another thing to get distracted and be participating in what is going around you. No, that God did not tell you to do that. Because me literally even looking in somebody's windows, me if somebody was in there having sex and I'm sitting there looking on my side looking at it, I might as well be inside participating in it with the spiritual ties I'm creating. Because every time I think about it, I'll be all stimulating. And what? Go go whack off to it? Well then, that means that I I, I I, I picked up that spirit, and now that spirit is not just there; it's in me, which would, would be a demon. That 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 would be a demon. I picked up a demon, and it housed itself through an open door, and now it's using my body members to get its wacky do off. I'm gonna um. I, I'm doing a, a radio show on, well, actually tomorrow. Today, well, yeah, tomorrow, no, 12 o'clock, yeah. Uh, with a friend of mine, Patricia, and it's come, come about coming out of homosexuality and things like that. You know, the one thing that people need to understand is that um, when these people who say that they're homosexuals or whatever they are, they are. <laughs> Don't think there's just a demon in them. No, they are that. Because um, what happens is that the devil gets inside of you, and uh, once he's in there, and he's he's got a strong man in there, he starts opening doors for other demons to come inside, and they come inside, and they take over that house, and they have you running around like a nutcase, doing everything that is pleasurable to you and of the world, including homosexuality, and. Um, you participate in it because you are you you're you're you participate in it and you will be held responsible for the actions that happen within that vessel, especially if you knew the truth. But what happens is it becomes your nature. It becomes who you are. It becomes a part of you and it becomes who you are. That's what I've been trying to get through these videos. Um, the only how do you change your nature? How do you change who you are? According to the world, it's impossible. But according to the book, the, the book of the book of God, it says that the way you change is well. There's there's only two there's only two conditions to be in. Two. There's, there's only two conditions that you can be in. You can be in the image of God, or you'll be in the image of the devil. There's no in between. Don't fool yourself into thinking there isn't in between just because somebody was a good person. No. You're in the image of the devil. The devil has he has demons that can sit and be religious. He has demons that like to sing church songs. Those homosexuals who like to lead praise and worship, are they saved? Or are they full of demons? If they're full of demons, then they have demons in them that like to sing and like to perform. And this is just that's just another way for them to be elevated up so that you will worship them. You ever see a praise and worship leader that that the praise is going to them instead of through them? And you got devils in front of you. Because what did what was what was the devil's what did the devil do in heaven? What was he? 
Ooh, we should be able to find that. You get your Bible. Okay, this has been a Bible day. You know, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. Go to, um, let me think. Is it Ezekiel? Go, I'm, I'm just checking to see because I don't know for sure. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. I'm pretty sure you're probably already there. Um, go to the book of Ezekiel. I'll go to chapter, is it, it's either 14 or 28. Let's try 14 right here. Okay, let's go to 1 because I'm not sure exactly where. If I had my Bible, which is over there, I'd be able to know right away. Uh, then the Lord's message came from the Lord and son of man. Even Noah, Daniel, the insurance of the sovereign Lord. Um, see, this is, and this is the way that everybody should be, you know. You should have an eye to, to work your way around the Bible. I'm giving you practical things, too. If you have, just have an idea where it's at. Because I know it's either Ezekiel 14 or Ezekiel 28. And the other one is Isaiah 14 or Isaiah 28. Now I know this is in Isaiah 14. And if I'm looking for the Ezekiel one, I'm looking for Ezekiel chapter 28. Now let, let's try and see if I even have half a clue. Ezekiel 28. We're doing this together. Let's go to chapter 1 because I don't know exactly where it's at. I could cheat and look at my Bible because I have them all marked. Oh, yes, yeah, this, this is it. The king of Tyre. Uh, um, Tyre. Tyre is Tyre. Tyre. King of Tyre. Um, I think it starts off um, at 11. Then the rules, then this further message came to me from God. Son of man, sing this funeral song for king of Tyre. Give him his message for the sovereign Lord. You you work this is the devil it is in Ezekiel um, it starts at 11 Ezekiel 11 28 11 but let's go to um, Ezekiel 13 20, Ezekiel 28 13 I'm reading the New Living Translation Ezekiel 28 13 it says you were in Eden can't be a man because there was no man in Eden except for Adam so he's talking to the devil you were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. Red, carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green barrel, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis, lazuli, turquoise, and emeralds all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. I adorned and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sinned. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, almighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. By your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defiled your sanctuaries within your many sins and your dishonest trade so I brought fire out from within you I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you hmm so he had fire within him and he brought it out and it consumed him wow. I reduce you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching all who knew you are appalled at your fate you have come to a terrible end and you will exist no more that's the devil now let's go to Isaiah 14 let's see Isaiah chapter 14 and I don't know exactly where it's at but I'll find it but the Lord you mercy in the nations of the world in the day the Lord uh, 
You will taunt the king, you will say they are mighty and destroyed. Blah, 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 blah. Sing a joy song since you have been cut down. No one will come now that you cut down in the place. Okay, I see. You are mighty and destroyed. Now. And broken evil where you struck the people with endless blows of rage and the nation's angry grip. And finally, earth is a rest and quiet. Now, you must have been before then. Because uh, I, I think this one does start at 11. The sound of the heart. Oh, wow, yeah. All of this, um, I have to look at my Bible to see exactly where it starts off at. In the place of the dead, there is no extra minute of spiritual. Yeah, because um, this is the the place. Uh, oh, okay, here it is. Uh, Isaiah 14, 13. 13 is must be an unlucky number for the devil. Isn't that interesting? When we were looking over at Ezekiel, it started off in 13. And in Isaiah 14, it starts off in verse 13. Is that why they, they like their number so much? Because everywhere it's 13, it's talking about the devil? So you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. The north is the top. I will climb to the highest heavens to be like the most high God. Instead, you you will be brought. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to the lowest depths. Everyone will stare at you and ask, "Can this be the one who shook the earth and made the kingdoms of, and the world tremble? Is this the one who destroyed the world and made it a wasteland? Is this the king who demolished the world's greatest cities and had no mercy on his prisoners?" So anyway, um. Anyway, we'll get into that. It was well. It goes into the, I think it was well, the other one we just read. It talks about how um, the devil was the worship leader in heaven, and he had music instruments built into him, and he knows all about music and praise and everything of that sort. And if he was the one who stood in front of God, and, and all the praise and worship came through him, because when he opened up his span, he lit up. And then all the angels would bow down and praise and worship would come through him to God that was behind him. Because he was to honor God. It was, he was illuminating everything and everyone knew that he was the worship leader. So these worship, these homosexual worship leaders are, who are in the image of the devil are doing exactly what the devil does or did. And they're getting that worship. Instead of going, letting it go flow to God, they try and trap it within themselves. And they take the worship for themselves. That's the devil. That's why the devil wants to be worshipped. So anyway, um, but that's the homosexual nature too. That's the image of the devil. So um, what I'm what I'm what I'm getting here is that your nature is what must be changed because that is who you are. So now there's only one way out. The only way out is through Jesus Christ, who says that he will come inside and he will change your nature. The old person, how, in order for the new one to arise, the old one must die. John the Baptist said it the best. He said, I must go dim so that he will go, his light will grow. John the Baptist said that. I don't know why a lot of people never caught that, but that's what he said. And that means that's what's in you. You, your nature, must dim in order for Christ to rise. Because how can you both be lit up? It's impossible. Because one is darkness, and one is, one is darkness, one is light. And when Christ rises up, he will shine over that darkness that's you. And expose everything that's filthy there. And once it's exposed, the Holy Spirit can come in and start cleaning that junk out. And when you're fasting, what you do is you you say to the Lord, you know what? I'll expose. I got my, my I got my I got my two fish and my five bread, and I'm bringing it to you, Lord. I'm not going to eat tonight. I'm fasting, so I'll give you my meal, my two fish and my five loaves of bread. And He takes it. 
and he blesses it and he blesses you with it and he exposes those demons that are in you he is the inspector that comes in and inspects your house for the termites that have been hiding there and he will bring those termites he, when you shine a, you ever shine a light on a rat what does a rat do if the light hits them if you have roaches what, what, when you go in your if you ever had a house that was infested with roaches when you turn the light on what do they do they run if you have the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit's light is going bright what happens they start to run. And how, what does the Bible say? How, when, at what, what point does the devil flee? He flees when you resist him. So it's kind of like um, somebody comes over to you and says, You want to hit this joint? Shh, I hit the joint. And he, he's like, You hit And then you're like, No, he's smoking weed over there. And he's like, You son of a. He's smoking weed. The light shines bright on him, and he takes off. You got old programming in you from your past life, old programming that needs to be exposed. Okay, now it's exposed, and you don't uh, participate in whatever it is trying to get you to participate in, and you resist it, and you start screaming. You big tell tell. Look at him, he's doing this, catch him. And he flees. That's that's what you're doing in a fast. You're shining a light, you're letting the devil come over you and tempt you, you're like, What? And then as he says it, you stand there and you go, He said this and you say it loud and clear for everybody here, so the Holy Spirit come over and shine the light on him. What did you say? And he'll flee. And the thing is, you don't want him to flee into another dark space in the house. No. Because they do that. That's what I probably happened to me in my last 40 day fast. They fled into dark spaces in that house so that at an opportune moment when I may have been thinking and I went to that dark space, they were there waiting for me. So, you don't want them to come into that dark house. You want them to be cast out, flushed out. That's what a, this this is all about. And that is the process that's happening to me right now. And that's what should be happening to you on, I believe this is day 25. I, I need to stop saying the days because I'm, I get them wrong. Because I said day 23 on the, yesterday's video when that was actually day 24. <laughs> so anyway, um... That's what I wanted to get to you today. Um, and if you get a chance, I'll be um, on Watchmen on the Wall radio show tomorrow night. Um, today is 10 18 12, so I'll be on the radio show uh, 10 19 12 at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. So you can kind of figure out where from there because if it's 9 o'clock on the East Coast, that means it's 6 o'clock in California. If you're in the middle, and like where I'm at, it will be seven, and then if you're like in Texas, it'll be eight, and then if you're like on the East Coast, it's nine. So anyway, you can figure it out that way. And if you don't get to hear it because this may be posted after, well, this will be posted beyond tomorrow. So you can always go back, and um, on my Facebook wall will be a link, so you can go back and listen to the archives of the show, and you can hear what we talked about. If you don't get to go live, because I'm going live tomorrow, there's a chat room and things going on. Um, if you missed that, you can always go back and listen to the archive of the radio show. Hallelujah, just a commercial for Watchmen on the Wall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, um, what else do I want to say? I think that's about it for today. Um, you know, oh, I always forget this. I always forget to talk about the food. I, I hardly ever talk about the food because it's not that important to me. Um, like um, I tell you about those that girl who I saw, <laughs> she was going bananas after day 17 and she quit after day 17. But um, 
I think she went on another fast or something, and then who knows what she's doing now? Because it was totally all of the flesh. And um, I don't know. It, it um, when it's of the flesh, the man, you know, because I have had weight loss, but um, I actually don't know how much weight I've lost. And um. I lost and I don't want to find it again. I know that. that, just, that that's one of the good parts about, you know, this. That's a side effect. But that's not the main event that's going on. And, and you know what? Because think about why does God choose food? Of all things you can fast on, why is food? Well, because it deadens the flesh. And it takes the power away from the flesh. And the strength of it away. And it places it into the Holy Spirit, places it into your spirit, and now the flesh is dependent on your spirit to guide it now, rather than it being it guiding itself or the soul guiding it. Now it's waiting for your spirit to guide it. And so, if you get off this fast and you go back immediately to eating the way you did, um, and if that wasn't a healthy way, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're relapsing. I mean, because you're, in essence, even spiritually, you're going, you're going backwards. It's not good. And I won't make that mistake again. I mean, I have no intention of being any kind of health freak. Like, I'm, you know, because that's, that's too much of being in the flesh for me. But, um... I will take better care of God's vessel that he has longed to me. I'll take better care of it. And um, not even take better care of it. I will exercise it. You know? It's like somebody, like I said yesterday, somebody gives you a car and you, you, you run it, you, you just drive it. You put no oil in it, no nothing. And it's smoking and the wheels fall off and you're just going down the freeway. Spark. <laughs> And you come back, you had loaned this person your car five days ago, and you come back, and this is the condition it's in. <laughs> no, that ain't right. So anyway, um, um, somebody asked me, what do you, what do you eat? Um, I don't eat any food. This is a liquid diet for me. Uh, whatever God, God guides you to do, you do. I um, have juice. I have coffee. Um, I have cocoa in there, but I haven't even had desire for it. I, didn't, I think I made it once. Um, I don't care about food right now. Uh, last night I was something came over me. I was like thinking about chicken again because um, they had some chicken on sale at the store, roast rotisserie chicken for two dollars and fifty cents. What I did was I got three of them and I bought it and I stuck it in my freezer for when I come off this. But um, the, for me doing that, I had the thought in my mind, oh, I could take it in. Because my roommate, he did the same thing. He was peeling it off. I guess he's going to make sandwiches and all kinds of stuff out of it. Burritos, whatever. And that was, that was in my mind. And I was like... So I had to have my moment. <laughs> but it was like... Um, and I, I can wait on that. Because also... Um, yeah, my, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't want to discuss the old church I came from you see that how I, if you look at my previous videos how that has how the Lord has pushed it off me praise you Lord Jesus Christ for that but today they because I have distanced myself the devil won't allow that so they now are coming back in at me again and um I choose to ignore them. They, what they were doing was um the pastor was trying to give me a uh, eviction date. She wants me out of this place by the third of the month of next month. I mean, give them wolf tickets. You know what wolf tickets are? She's selling wolf tickets over there. No power whatsoever. Just like the devil. That's the devil. He sells wolf tickets too. Got no power making all the demands. And have no power whatsoever to execute those plans. It's like you, you. <laughs> Could you imagine 
it, it, it's like an old lady challenging um, um, some 20 year old boy to a f foot race. You can make that no power, old lady. What are you going to do? You know? And of course, they said it was God's will. They put all glossed over with God. Like, oh man, when this judgment is going to fall, and God is going, God does not like people using His name in that way. <laughs> and I'm going to be somewhere far away when that judgment falls. I don't want to be in the area when God's judgment falls for that. So, um, anyway, it's just trying to pull me back in. I'm just like. I'm not even going there. And that's about as much as you're going to hear about that from me. Um, because I'm not even going to entertain it. So hallelujah. I forgive him. I forgive her with the blood of Jesus. And I forgive them all. Her Ahab, I forgive him too. Ahab. A real Ahab. A real life Ahab. <laughs> Every Jezebel must have an Ahab. Um, or else she, she has no power. Because all the power really is in him. He's the king, but she's the one really ruling things. But it's all through his authority. That's, that's ugly and dirty. But anyway, um, hallelujah. Don't let me leave on that note. I leave on a note. I open in prayer, and I leave in prayer. And I say, thank you, Father God. Thank you for every moment I have here today. Thank you for every breath I'm taking right now. Thank you for exposing in me what is not of you and helping me to cast it out and away from me. Father God, please continue the programming that's going on in my soul. Program my soul and my flesh back to line up with my spirit. Back to the spirit of Jesus Christ. Back into your image, Father God. Take it and flip it from below and bring it back up. Father God, Father God, please, Father God, I ask this in your holy name. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray for each and every one of you out there who's going along this with me and who has an inverted spirit that is perverted and needs to be realigned in the image of Christ. I pray that happens for you. If you see this, who knows, down the road, and you need somebody who you can talk to about it, my email, you can email me. It is V as in Victor, R-O-M-E-R-O-N-E -E at MSN.com. And I will respond to you. And make sure you put in the, in the, um, the subject, um, fasting videos. You know, so that I'll know that it's from this and not just spam. If it's just spam, I just dump it. Um, send it to my email. B R O M E R O N E. It's spelled V Romero one when you read it out in a unique way. B R O M E R O N E at MSN dot com. Send me a message and I will reply to you. Hallelujah. And no matter where you're at, that way you can give me all over the world. I love you and God be with you. May Take your two fish, take your five loaves of bread, and hand them over to Jesus, and he will bless it, and he'll bless you too. Hallelujah.